320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching. Hello, and welcome to this briefing on the Airbus Golden Rules for Pilots. The Airbus Golden Rules for Pilots are high level operational guidelines on how pilots should fly modern technology aircraft, how they interact with complex auto flight systems, and how the pilot flying and the pilot motoring work together with the aircraft as one team. While the Golden Rules might seem very high level and pedantic at first, I will show their practical use and consequences if not strictly followed. Indeed, the violation of these golden rules can be linked to root causes of many incidents and accidents. They are an integral part of the knowledge, skill and attitude required to safely and efficiently operate the Airbus aircraft. There are four golden rules, all applicable to normal, abnormal and emergency situations, with the aircraft being flown manually or with the autopilot engaged. Let's have a closer look at these four golden rules. Rule number one, fly, navigate and communicate in this order and with appropriate task sharing. The key aspect of this rule is the priority of the steps. Indeed, your main priority should be to fly the aircraft on a safe trajectory. If this step is omitted or neglected, control of the aircraft could be lost or the aircraft could be flown into an unsafe position. The pilot flying must focus on flying the aircraft either manually or with the autopilot engaged. The pilot monitoring must assist the pilot flying and must actively monitor the flight parameters and call out any excessive deviation. This monitoring role is very important and often underestimated. If you want to know more on the power of monitoring, please check out our video on the wind platform. Flying the aircraft is not the sole responsibility of the pilot flying, but a shared responsibility of the entire flight crew. Therefore, both crew members should focus on flying the aircraft with appropriate task sharing. Once the aircraft is under control, it should be flown onto a safe flight path. This means that the flight crew must display good situational awareness. They know where they are, they know where they should be, and they know how to get there while considering the terrain and significant weather. Now the flight crew can communicate with the world outside the flight deck, inform air traffic control of any flight plan deviations or new intentions. The flight crew can communicate with the cabin crew to obtain a status report or to indicate a change in the flight. To ensure effective communication, the flight crew should use standard phraseology and applicable callouts. Imagine the flight crew performs a normal takeoff in configuration 2 and TOGA thrust. While they are lining up, the pilot monitoring forgets to set the TCA system in TARA mode. As the flight crew approaches the first level of altitude, they receive the associated ECAM message. This ECAM message distracts the flight crew. They do not realize the auto thrust system is not active yet and still commands TOGA thrust. As the autotrust is not active yet, it will not prevent the overspeed. Conclusion: The flight crew was distracted by this non-urgent ECAM and neglected to fly the aircraft first. Now that we have reviewed the first golden rule, we can move to the second one. Use the appropriate level of automation at all times. Airbus aircraft can be flown with several automation levels. Before starting a procedure, the flight crew must first select the most appropriate automation level for a task at hand. This will reduce the workload and increase the situational awareness of the crew. This selection can include manual flight. Secondly, the flight crew must fully understand the operational effect of the selected level of automation. Imagine the flight crew is returning early morning to Europe after a transatlantic crossing. The weather conditions at the destination airport are excellent. Light winds in Cav OK weather conditions. But the landing direction is east, facing the rising sun. This will make the landing harder for the crew, especially after a long night flight. So it might be a good idea to consider an automatic landing while considering the FCOM restrictions. Retard, retard, retard. Call on rule number three. 
understand the FMA at all times. The control of the automation system is done on the FCU or on the MCDU. The pilot flying, who makes all the selections on the FCU when the autopilot is engaged, must monitor the FMA to verify the modes that are engaged or armed. Any mode change on the FMA must be announced for the benefit of the pilot monitoring, who will confirm the FMA mode change or challenge the pilot flying if the active or selected modes deviate from the intended plan. This closed loop monitoring process will ensure that any time the flight crew is aware of which appropriate guidance modes are engaged or armed, what the guidance targets are, and the aircraft response in terms of attitude, speed, heading and thrust. Imagine the flight crew is on a long arrival route in level flight and receives a radar vector away from the arrival route. Shortly after, they receive a descent clearance. Instinctively, the pilot flying winds down the altitude and pushes the altitude knob for a managed descent. The pilot flying monitors the FMA and realizes the aircraft is not descending. After a quick analysis of the FMA, the pilot flying realizes the aircraft is not in nav mode anymore, but in selected heading mode, which does not allow for a managed descent. The pilot flying will now select a compatible selected descent mode, like open descent, by pulling the altitude knob. The pilot flying verifies the FMA to confirm the correct modes are engaged and verifies the aircraft is now descending as requested by the air traffic controller. Colon rule number four, take action if things do not go as expected. What should the flight crew do if the aircraft does not follow the desired flight path? or desired targets. In operation, the flight crew will not have enough time to analyze the situation, but must recognize it and must take immediate action. For the pilot flying, this could mean changing the level of automation from managed guidance to selected guidance or from selected guidance to manual flying. The pilot monitoring should communicate with the pilot flying, challenge the pilot flying's actions and, when necessary, take over. Imagine the flight crew is on approach and receives the radar vectors for an ILS approach. As it happens, the flight crew is radar vectored above the glide slope. The pilot flying realizes the situation and applies the interception from above technique. He arms the approach mode and winds up the altitude to avoid the aircraft to level off. While he does that, he accidentally pulls the altitude knob so that the aircraft goes in open climb mode. The pilot flying, who mortars the FMA, realizes the error and takes action. The pilot flying pushes the vertical speed knob to make the aircraft level off and afterwards winds down the vertical speed to approximately minus 1,000 feet per minute to regain the glide slope. Now that we have reviewed all four golden rules, I hope that you realize how important it is to reinforce these golden rules to your trainees. They are part of the basic behavior that the pilots must have to safely fly Airbus aircraft. I hope you liked this briefing on golden rules and I hope to see you again for the next one. A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching.